So uh, Zach and I put a, a lot of time and effort, and um, we've been working on this for, for at least two months. I was going to say hours. Um, <laughs> I think we started this about midnight last night. And... We'll call me. Yeah. Me. So um, we know that there's some people in the room that, that aren't in InfoSec yet, and we thought, hey, like, uh, let's, let's give a talk on uh, how each of us ended up there, what our perceptions are of um, some good skills to get uh, to get there, and at the end, if if you guys want to contribute, anybody else that that's in infosec says, hey, you know, I want to contribute to this, uh, let us know, and we'll do kind of like question question and answer session, open mic, whatever. <coughs> but um, a little bit about me, um, I'm commonly mistaken for the Duff Man, <laughs> and I hold chihuahuas. Is this skin tone that goes in there? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I'm scared. laughs> um, uh, my, in the Twitter channel, or Twitter, in the Slack channel, I'm Jupiter thingy, so, um, it all started when, uh, I decided to go to college, that's my college pick, so, um, yeah, late 90s, uh, <laughs> I, went, I went to college, uh, decided, hey, I'm going to go to college, get a poli sci degree, because I'm going to be a lawyer, that's cool, um, and then, I get deployed. And then I came back and I was like, I don't know what to do. So I started, I kind of fell into an IT job. Um, it was more of an infrastructure job. I guess you guys can't read that, but my job was to climb around in attics where my boss didn't want to go and pull cables. And so this, this is in the, this is in the um, Chamber of Commerce building. You have to start on the second floor and climb up like beams to get up to the third floor and climb over a finished area. And one of the AC techs had written on it, hey Barry, to climb up here you have to be a monkey or just crazy, or plain just crazy. So I thought that was funny. Um, so then I built an antenna in somebody's backyard. Literally. <laughs> um, Did he ask you to? <laughs> <laughs> Not really sure. <laughs> Um, and, and during this process, I started learning, you know, IP addressing and some subnetting stuff. And, and um, you know, growing up, I was into computers. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like, like I can maybe make a job of this. Um, and started getting interested in it. And then I got the point again. So, um, and while I was there, I was, I was figuring out, I'm like, I'm like, hey, I've got enough GI Bill for two years. So uh, right before I left, I graduated because I was like, okay, I just need to get a degree, whatever. Um, but then I figured out I had enough for, for two years and decided to go to Kirkwood. So Kirkwood had a system, it's called Network and System Administration now. It was land management when I went there. But uh, basically, it's it's networking and system and stuff. So, Same um, yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some Kirkwood people here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, and while I was at Kirkwood, um, I found out about this CDC thing. and. Well, this, you might, this might look familiar to you. Um, so, ended up competing in the CDC. Uh, first one I did, I, you know, I was, I think, second semester or something, and um, Will was the team lead, and he's like, okay, who wants to web server? And I was like, why not me? Sure, you know, didn't know a thing about Linux, and um, spent a month of all of my spare time breaking the web server over and over and over and over and over again. Reverse That's why, on. yeah, VMs are great. <laughs> so um, really just jumped in both feet first and uh, had a lot of fun with it and um, had some successes. So our team came in first in 2012 and 2013. I think we came in first before that, but I don't have a picture of it. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. CDC was really kind of my my first experience with InfoSec. And then uh, after I graduated, I was like, okay, got to get a job at a big company, work my way up. Uh, so I started at the help desk at ACT. And uh, first day I was there, they announced they were outsourcing their entire IT department. <laughs> so um, I got to spend like the next two months looking for a job at work. That was a really interesting experience. Um, I was like, you know, tell my supervisor, I'm like, hey, I'm going to an interview. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, and like, we'd all get together afterwards and discuss the, the, the job opportunities because we're all going to the same interviews. Um, so that was kind of funny. But uh, then I ended up at West Music. Um, started there as a um, uh, 
system support. Uh, I worked my way up to a uh, sysadmin adjacent job. I think my title is IT systems, IT infrastructure manager. Yeah. But um, I hope it's the whole team. What's that? How big was the whole team? It was massive. Um, there was like three people. So. <laughs> um, that was cool. Um, you know, they, they actually did big company, um, <clears throat> bigger than a lot of people think they are. But um, kept my eyes open and saw an opportunity at the university for a security position. And uh, I applied for it. So I <clears throat> uh, went ahead and applied. I, I knew I had my uh, had a couple certs at the time. Still interested in security, doing the CDC stuff on the dot on the side. Um, went through a couple rounds of interviews and got the job, and that's where I've been ever since. So, next slide. Um, so basically, my advice, yeah, second XKCD slide. Uh, just do exactly what I did, and you'll get a job in infosec. <laughs> that's okay, right? So, like this guy's saying, just just keep buying lottery tickets, and and you'll become a millionaire. Um, so the point is, you know, ask the pro the problem with infosec is you ask a hundred people how they got into infosec, you'll get a hundred different answers because it's a really young field. There's no real established pathways yet. So, okay, I get to the point already. Um, main things I have to say are your background in infosec isn't as important as in a traditional position. Um, it's not as much about specific milestones as much as it is about who and what you know. So in InfoSec, uh, the community's not that, not that big. Uh, you, you go to enough events, you start seeing the same people. Um, and if you're, you're active, you know, people will start to recognize you. Same with, um, and, and the ability to demonstrate your skills is, is a lot more important than, you know, any sort of qualifications. Uh, key traits, absolutely passion, curiosity. So I know um, when, when we interview people at the U, one of the questions is always, you know, do you have a home lab? What do you do on, you know, what, what do you do uh, in your spare time for InfoSec? Because uh, the, the really good people are the ones that, that are interested in InfoSec. They don't just want the job, but mm -hmm. they're, you know, it's, it's an interest of theirs. And curiosity, the, the ability to look at something and say, okay, uh, how does this work? How do I make it work like it's not supposed to? How do I bypass the safeguards? Um, really, those are really kind of key traits for InfoSec. Um, with all that being said, you need a way to demonstrate this. So, um, certs. Uh, people kind of keep people will, will um, people are divided on certs. The way I think of certs are that work experience is, trumps certifications, certifications trump education. Um, I think in our in our uh, in infosec, I think certs do hold a certain amount of value. They, it's a baseline. Um, that being said, you know I'm sure everyone in here that's in infosec knows somebody that has a cert that, you know, probably shouldn't have that cert, but. It's <laughs> and yeah now now I'm I'm going against one of my later slides but <laughs> so certs by themselves in a vacuum don't prove that that somebody you know it proves that somebody passed the test right but um they're they're something uh, some of the ones that yeah, <laughs> some of the ones that, that the one, some of the ones I had um, before getting into infosec were security plus CCNA. Um, CCNA security, I didn't have that one, but that's another good one that's around that same level. SFCP was one I was studying for. That's, that's, we put that on the slide, but I yeah. didn't have it. I didn't I have it, these, but I didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Meetups and conferences. You should have them. Yeah, you should get them. I didn't need them. He's already in it. Yeah. <laughs> he has work experience. <laughs> um, meetings, conferences, again, community, get out there. Meet people, talk to people. Um, and last one is, if only there were a city sec in which one could present ideas and demonstrate infosec skills and passion simultaneously. <laughs> Does anybody think of something like that? So we we have Nothing. we technically kind of started this group uh, like four years ago, <laughs> but it was like not quite this organized, and we just met at a bar. 
mostly one session. <laughs> uh, but I can think of at least five people who got insect jobs just by showing up to that. Yeah. yeah. That's why we do the jobs thing every month. Too. Yeah. yeah. All right. So where do you start? Um, again, not to beat a dead horse, but say a certain monthly info sec or city sec in Iowa City. Uh, Twitter. Uh, if you're if you're brand new to Twitter, just go to Hacks for Pancakes. Like she's awesome. If you're looking to to get started in infosec, um, otherwise Much Grok is my handle. Just start you know looking through what stuff I follow and start following it. Um, I mostly follow infosec stuff. Um, infosec Taylor Swift is is very important. You'll get, you'll get all, the, all the important information there. It's kind of tongue in cheek. It's fun, but. Um, but like legit, Hacks for Pancakes, she is constantly posting stuff for, if you're looking to get into InfoSec, if you're you know trying to develop skill sets, her Twitter feed is amazing. She, she runs a uh, resume workshop at almost every con that she goes yep. to. Yep. She has a really good blog post too as well. Like, yep, yeah, I forgot to pull the link to that, but but the, she has a whole series of, of posts about getting into InfoSec. Uh, Reddit, NetSec, it's a good subreddit. And uh, speaking of cons, and one that, that Hacks for Pancakes is running a resume workshop at is Circle City Con. You may have heard us mention it before. Um, so we should go. Also, you should probably go to Circle City Con. Where are their tickets still? Yeah, there's still tickets available, uh, reasonably priced. They do uh, a series of trainings that are kind of um, that are less expensive. It's like five or ten dollars half day training. Um, they're doing like they're doing Splunk. They're doing Elk. They're doing um, what, threat hunting. They're doing malware RE. They're doing memory forensics. Um, you know, it's $100, 100, 150 for the ticket now, I think they're up to. Yeah. Um, and then you pay like $5 for each of these trainings. So and it's. Your resume, the recruiters will not go wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's in Indianapolis. It's driving distance away. If we get enough people, we can get a van. I don't know. So, what skills should How many are going from here? Yeah. Four of us so far. Four. Four. When is it? June 1? June 1st through the 3rd. Yeah, it's that weekend. So what skills should you hone? I've always thought of InfoSec as kind of a, a, a mix of a few different skills. Um, first is system administration. Um, as an InfoSec person, you're just expected to know how systems are supposed to work. Um, and a lot of times you're going to have to work with a system administrator that may not have the best understanding of their system. And you're, you're going to have to, to to know that system. So system administration is huge. Uh, networking, again, another one. You need to know how, how systems talk to each other. Um, networking, a lot of that falls into the security realm, firewalls, um, IDS, IPS, network uh, monitoring, all tends to be in the realm of InfoSec. Um, so networking skills and understanding what's going on beyond your tools is, is really helpful there. Uh, finally, this is this is kind of my my weakest point is programming. Um, I don't have a programming background, and I can't tell you how many times I've thought, "Man, if only I knew how to program, I could solve you know solve you this one guy on the team that can code." That's what you need. Yeah, you but need if you're if you're trying to be well rounded, I'd say I'd say system administration, networking, programming. You get away with uh, being really good at one and interested interested in infosec, or you know pretty good at two of them. Uh, from what I again, I'm what not a programmer, but from what Python. I've seen, Python. My, my recommendation is just pick one. Python. So I'm learning Python right now. Um, start, Ruby start Ruby yeah, seems very shell. pretty popular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Pick the pick something and figure out what problems you can solve with it that make you the one guy on the team that Greg will hire because he only wants one. Yep. That's right. No, that's right. And Python. That's right. Python's a great option because if you look at what other infosec people are using, uh, a lot of times it's Python. Yeah. And programming is language based, right? So the structure of programming is just logic. Mm. So when you pick one to focus on and learn, you're going to understand how that flow works. Once you have that, you can focus on language, and then. Every other language is just inserting different nomenclature into that yeah. same process. I, I, I argue there's two families: you have your procedural and your object oriented. Right? Sure. You know what you can do. In, in, in you know a lot more about programming than I do. Right? <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. 
Uh, last skill, uh, a lot of people refer to these as soft skills, but um, I really think uh, the ability to communicate and the ability to work with others is, is really key. Um, especially in, in InfoSec, a lot of times you're going to find yourselves having to communicate with people that aren't as technical or that don't have uh, as much of a security understanding. You're going to have to talk to the, the programmer that doesn't understand the networking and systems administration side or the security side. You're gonna to have to talk to the systems administrator who doesn't understand the network or the, the security side. And you're you're gonna to have to know how to how to talk to people and how to communicate to people um, that that aren't InfoSec professionals. So what not to do? Um, shit post, wine, blame. Um, you, one of the problems with InfoSec is What's that? What's left? Yeah. <laughs> One of the problems with InfoSec is is you spend enough time on Twitter, and and you start to see that there's like there's some kind of toxic people, and there's some there's kind of a negative attitude that can can uh, pervade sometimes. And really, I think it's personally, I think it's kind of detrimental to get wrapped up in that. And um, a lot of people really like to focus on what people did wrong, um, you know, the things that are wrong. End users suck, uh, whatever, and and instead of looking at it, okay, this is a problem. I need to solve it. Um, no more end users. Yep. Another thing: burn bridges, make enemies. Uh, again, infosec community, pretty damn small. Like you start going to cons, you'll see the same people over and over and over again. Um, you know, be be careful. Don't don't be an ass. <laughs> people will remember that. Uh, also, give up. Don't. The one of the one of the important things about InfoSec is the ability to be uh, be curious and and be resourceful. So you run into a roadblock. Um, you need to be able to to kind of help yourself first. You need to say, okay, you know, did I Google this? Did <laughs> I Google this well? Um, you know, like find out what you know and what you can extrapolate from that. Um, People in infosec, they're they're helpful, but if you if you go up to someone and if you're if you go into the community and say, hey, I can't figure this out, and it's a simple Google search, um, you know, they're, they're not going to be as helpful. So <laughs> so help yourself first. And I don't know. Don't <laughs> not go to Circle City Con. Might notice the trend here. Okay. So what's the TLDR? Infosec is challenging. Infosec is rewarding. Never stop learning. Present at Sec I see. <laughs> and go to Circle City Con. <laughs> Do you get paid every time you mention that? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. My <laughs> girls <laughs> <getting our plus>. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my uh, I'm Zach Zappis for those I haven't met. Um, this is my self congratulatory slide. This is literally ripped from every slide deck I do at Pro Circular. Uh, a trend with Matt and I that you'll find is we take our jobs very seriously, but not necessarily ourselves. Um, <laughs> I don't know, we can pull some tidbits in my background out of here. Uh, President Sec IC, two decades. I've been in IT about 18 years now. Uh, since 2000 was my first real like professional gig. CH, CISSP, FBI, DHS, uh, InfraGuard, yada, 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 right? Uh, but how did I get here? I started off as a young surfer kid in Southern California. Um, this was a great picture because this same summer, we took an awesome vacation. But I also got to work at my uh, local high school, and we replaced the bus network that they had with an actual switch system. It's pretty neat. And that was kind of like my first real experience with IT, the nitty gritty of it. Before that, I was kind of just, you know, playing a shit ton of StarCraft and yelling at my mom for picking up the phone when I was doing games. <laughs> the Come on, ma. Um, but yeah, so I got through high school, and I kind of realized that I should get a job. And I'm good at computers, right? So I should go to, I should go to school. So I put on my glasses and I grew a mohawk. And I went to the, <laughs> the University of Southern California, Irvine. Uh, got a BS in broadcast engineering and a secondary in network engineering. And I had two big ass CRTs back before like dual monitors were cool. <laughs> I'm very proud of that picture. The Pringles on the side and shit. Um, but yeah, so then I became a broadcast engineer. Um, I worked for a Sinclair Broadcast Group for a long time. Uh, 
Brandon uh, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm lie, uh, I worked on uh, like live trucks, uh, broadcast engineering, microwave, right? You're setting frequencies. Um, a lot of that is backwards compatible and, and applicable to wireless stuff. Um, so working that, those two angles together, networking and wireless, as kind of the early thousands were taken off and Wi-Fi was starting to be a thing, it pounded out pretty well. Um, but outside of that, I, I worked on uh, some of these live trucks, which were just really cool because you build an entire mobile studio in like the back of an 18-wheeler. This was my, my department that I uh, planned out and built on this one. This was uh, uh, the first fully digital uplink, satellite uplink truck for, um, I think ESPN was the end client that wound up buying it. Um, so this whole left-hand side is like cameras and feeds and switching, and then all the network stuff's back here behind behind doors because nobody touches it. Um, and that's the big coon switching board. That was like a three hundred and sixty thousand dollars switching board at the time. I'm sure it's still pretty ridiculously expensive, but they trusted me with this shit. It's crazy. <laughs> I was so young and dumb, dude. It was such a bad idea. Wild. Um, and at that point. Um, can kind of see it back here, but I was in Palm Springs, California at that point. Uh, Indio, Palm Springs, Rancho Mirage, uh, the deserts of Southern California, um, which is a cool place, but the recession hit, and like a place that has 18 golf courses and $300 million mansions on the hills, the recession hit, dude. Nobody, nobody came to Palm Springs. Nobody's gonna golf when they can't pay their, their first mortgage, let alone their third or fourth. So uh, Sinclair's like, hey, um, we got this position in Iowa. And I was like, Iowa, fuck yeah, dude. Ooh, uh, heck yeah, dude. Sounds good. <laughs> Sorry, PG-13, that's right. So I was like, yeah, man, land of the free. We got like cornfields and stuff. But nobody <laughs> told me this stuff happened. <laughs> my, my, so I drove up here uh, 2008 in November from Southern California. Packed, so all my crap, packed everything I had left in my Ford Fusion at the time and booked it. I got pulled over in, I think, Arizona on my way up here in Nevada. And the cop looks in the back. He's like, how much pot you got back there? I was like, I don't have any pot back there. And he's like, all right, well, where are you going? I said, I'm moving out to Iowa, man. I got my car's packed full of stuff. All right. Runs my stuff, comes back. So why are you going to Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, never saw snow either. That was a hell of an experience. <laughs> Figuring that out. So I got here and I got fat and I had kids. And I have a family out here now. And these were kind of like the formative years in really solidifying uh, what, what turned into be uh, my, my red team InfoSec stuff, which was with uh, Keystone IT. Matt worked there actually too. Yeah. Uh, a local MSP, they are like right there still. Um, but one thing I would say about MSPs, you get your hands dirty and you learn to fix things really quick because you got a lot of customers a lot of different networks and a lot of different designs, and they need to be up. So I went from you know Sinclair Broadcast Group, which was one of the largest corporations around, to I think I was employee four maybe, not counting or counting their his dad. Um, <laughs> you know, kind of jumped in on the small business bandwagon, and I learned a whole bunch, man, just ridiculous amounts of stuff on on how to really build a cohesive network for a business need. Um, <laughs> and then I struck out on my own after Keystone. I went to my music, <laughs> oddly enough. Um, you know, they were a startup here in the city. Uh, Matt kind of touched on it. They're a lot bigger than you think. They're actually the 12th largest music retailer in the world. So they, yeah, <laughs> they do some business, man. Um, so I was the infrastructure engineer uh, and security specialist, I think was my title. Yeah, infrastructure engineer, security specialist. And in the meantime, while I'm at West, kind of trying to, you know, build up their security posture. Um, I'm going to cons and I'm reading. I'm going to cons and I'm studying. I'm going to cons and I'm watching, you know, YouTube. And um, you know, I kind of got into the CTF thing. Um, I noticed that when you spend a lot of your career kind of building networks for a lot of different companies, you tend to do it uh, in a modular manner. You know, you take a again with the MSP thing, everything's really fast paced. So you take a snapshot of the business that you're working with. And then you need to construct their castle for them as quickly as you can. Again, everything's timing based. But what I noticed is in the CTFs, a lot of like the competitive CTFs, not the not the puzzly, <clears throat> trickery ones, um, was a lot of these were just kind of reversing that whole process. Like, 
here's this network that we built, tear it apart, right? So my first uh, like official CTF that I competed in, like considered myself to, whoop, to actually play in was Circle City Con 2016, I want to say, a couple years ago. That was me. I had eighth place. Sec DSM stomped it, of course. Go figure. Um, I didn't really know those guys then. I mean, I knew of them. Um, but then the next conference I went to, I got fourth place and I was doing better. I was kind of hacking the things. And then the one after that, I took first. I stormed the place. And I really started paying attention to the red team stuff. And the red teams kind of started paying attention to me. Um, you know, Circular kind of came up and was like, hey, so you want to do some contract work? It's like, okay. A couple months later, I went full time for them. And that's kind of how I got into the red team. Um, I learned how things worked, how to make them not work, how to pull it apart. Um, even as a kid, like I got a new toy, I got a radio or something, I'd pull the back off, start pulling circuits out and shit, what didn't work, put it back together. And kind of applying that whole mentality back to the, the IT side of things is really where that comes in. I studied and I read a lot. Uh, I did a lot of self-teaching. I still do every day. It's ridiculous. Self-learning, there you go. Uh, self-studying, there you go. <laughs> Quizzing, testing, uh, lots of internets, lots of YouTubes. And go to cons. Go to cons. I know we like joke about the Circle City Con for what? 15, I think they're like $6.25 per training. Yeah. <laughs> so three days worth of training, three half days worth of training, and then you party the rest of the time. I mean, you got these like national leaders that'll come up and teach you stuff for 18 bucks. Do it, do it. It's great information. It's only the fifth one this year. It's gonna be awesome. But yeah, <laughs> so this part wasn't scripted. Background isn't important. Like what you did back in the day doesn't matter. You know, there's CEOs, CTOs, CISOs that worked as art directors that got into security. And they now, like, run businesses. They run everything. Well, you know. <laughs> that stuff happens sometimes. <laughs> Passion and curiosity. How do I break it? How do I put it back together? How does it work? These are, these are critical things. Um, you do, do need to demonstrate some know-how, like Matt said. Security, these are, these are all Matt's bullet points at this point. <laughs> it wasn't scripted though. But same thing, right? Like, you know, if, if I come to you saying I got a passion for cybersecurity, great. So what are you studying? What are you learning? Uh, you know, cybersecurity. Cyber come to you, do, do your security plus. It takes no time to get in there and learn that. And at least you're demonstrating that kind of that baseline minimum, right? Don't get your CISSP. You don't need it. It's terrible. Uh, foundational knowledge for red teaming. Build a lab and learn. Build a lab at home. There's an exploitable. There's all of the stuff from the OWASP. Like there's tons of owner boxes on bone, bone box. Bone 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 there we go. Like you can do this at home just on your Please. desktop. You don't need a dedicated server, a Dell 29 series that'll heat your house to 150 degrees. And just do it, right? A lot of the red teaming is illegal. So if you're not doing it on the bone hub stuff, Try and kind of branch out where you can. Talk to your neighbors, see if they'll let you sniff their Wi-Fi. When I moved into my newest neighborhood, I distributed pamphlets to my neighbors. I was like, hey, this is going to seem kind of weird, but I'm going to be sniffing your traffic. <laughs> so if you have a problem, come talk to me, and I'll block it from my list, so I won't look at it, right? They were all cool with it, because nobody had any idea what was going on. <laughs> They're like, well, all right, it's a freak. Learn at work. Would you sign this random? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You should see the file when they uh, <laughs> come knocking. Nobody Learn your party right now. <laughs> Nobody brings their phones. <laughs> Learn at work, right? We're here eight hours a day plus. If you can get there a little early before everyone else is there and set up, open up Wireshark, start sniffing, figure things out. If you have these networks around you, you know, dedicate a couple hours before or after work to really get into that network and learn stuff. Do it with permission of your, you know, your business, of course. But you're not going to be able to build a production network with like whole integrated AD LDAP systems at home and really run it and you're not going to sit there and you know sniff out like file sharing catch no uh nl nlm v2 ntlm v2 packet and crack it at home besides the one time that stuff's probably flying around all over the place at your work right assuming they're not really they don't have a great security posture <laughs> um your degree does not define you right broadcast engineering it's not what i do I, I couldn't even remember how to tell you how to like calculate free space path logs 
free path to faith. Free, yeah, I don't even know what it's called anymore, dude. <laughs> like, that's how much I use that stuff. But my passion's in IT and in security, and that's what I do. Um, I will almost always hire on a desire to learn more. If I ask you a question in an interview and you come back with, I don't know, but I'll get back to you, or I don't know the answer to that, but I'm gonna figure it out. Or if you just say, I don't know, and then email me two days later with the answer, you're gonna be getting a second interview. Like, we're, we're gonna be talking. And I'm gonna want to see that you wanna learn things. I wanna see you getting out there and figuring stuff out. Um, really from a red team perspective, kind of, kind of to mirror what Matt said, foundational knowledge, right? IT infrastructure, learn where backups go, how people create backups, where they store things, how they build their backup systems, you know, how servers run, how servers work, interconnections, look at, you know, network diagrams and drawings, foundational network information, learn how, you know, the entire <laughs> stack runs. You should, should know, need, you need to know all of that, especially when you're opening up, you know, Wireshark and trying to figure stuff out that's floating around the network. Windows AD, everyone runs it. It's a nightmare, we all hate it. Every business runs it. Learn it, it's pretty simple. I want to pull things apart. Like, I wanna know why that hash is on the wire. I wanna know why there's a challenge and a handshake, you know, within one conversation, why I can crack it in just a few minutes. Like, that's, that's critical, right? You, I need to know why. And I think that's really the foundation of Red Team, is really getting into the nitty gritty and pulling things apart. And then sadly, knowledge of the tools. A lot of stuff's really script oriented nowadays. Python is a good language for programming, especially for red team stuff. Perfect. Right? <laughs> right? And uh, you know, Kali Linux, you'll hear it every day. How many tools are actually on Kali, man? I couldn't even tell you. 130, 190, shit. But you know, red team's sexy, everyone wants to be part of it, but it's mentality. It's a way of life. You know, I, I don't go places that I don't look for vulnerabilities physically in a place or you know, scope out the back of computers that are sitting up in places. You know, hey, there's an open USB port. I wonder what I could plug in there. And a good lawyer. Keep a lawyer on retainer if you're gonna red team. It's just good business practice. That's or work it. for someone who does. That too. <laughs> yeah. Employer lawyer. Man, yeah, that's it. Any questions? Mm -hmm. So once you guys have been talking about Circle CityCon, tickets are still available. 